Hi, my name is Jeremy Lickness. Welcome to another episode of On.NET. We're going to talk today about .NET Core and containers. Now, I have with me a special guest that's uh, MVP from Atlanta, Josh Lane. Hi, everybody. I'm Josh. Tell them a little bit about yourself. Well, I'm a Azure MVP. I'm uh, like Jeremy. I'm from Atlanta, uh, here in the good old USA, and uh, I'm looking forward to talking about uh, containers on Azure. One of the great things about .NET Core is that it's cross-platform. Another great aspect is that Visual Studio tooling has evolved to support containerization of .NET Core apps. So before we jump into that and show what that looks like. Like to talk a little bit about containers. Uh, so, Josh, you know, what are your thoughts on containers and what's so special about them? Well, I mean, the containers have a no number of really uh, interesting advantages. Whether you're running them on Azure or running them on premise, uh, you have isolation of your code. You have security built in. You have uh, the ability to package up all of your code and dependencies as a single contiguous unit. You can version those things, deploy them wherever you want, whether it's on prem or in, or, uh, in the cloud. Uh, so a number of really, really interesting advantages. Yeah, I like to, um, if we switch to my presentation here, I like to walk through just a simple example of how containers take away some of our responsibilities. So this is what traditionally we'd be responsible for on premise. We've got the hardware, the operating system, the runtime, and the application. Virtualization gave us virtual machines, of course, and it took away the responsibility for the hardware. We're still responsible for the operating system, for security patches, and everything else. Right. Now, platform as a service takes it another level and even manages that runtime. So you're just deploying a project. One complaint some people have with platform as a service, though, is it almost takes away flexibility, right? You're tied to that. Well, you've got, well, you've got whatever sandbox somebody has defined for you. And some sandboxes, of course, are better than others. But at the end of the day, it's still a box within which you have to play. So right. sure, some people, they they find that uh, constricting in some way. So if we take a look at the, the next step, we've got this concept of containers. This is really application and runtime. You package together exactly what's needed for your application and nothing more. You're no longer responsible for the operating system or the hardware. And that really creates this image, which is a template for running a piece of code. Right. 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 And so if we look at this, what it creates is a, a bunch of benefits. And you covered these. They're, they're small. Containers might be megabytes in size compared to virtual machines, which can be gigabytes. They're very consistent, so they run the same on any environment that's right. a container no, host. No more works on my machine, but <laughs> doesn't work someplace else, right? Exactly. Yeah. You can't, it takes away that excuse. They're, they're isolated, so there's uh, security boundaries around sure. running instances. They're fast, they're simple, and, and they scale. So they're great for maximizing density of code that's running on your available hardware, your available resources. Again, whether it's in the cloud, whether it's on-prem, you have the ability, you know, say you can run a handful, two, three, four VMs on a, a given set of resources. Typically, you're going to see uh, multiples of that as far as the number of container instances that you could run on equivalent, uh, right. equivalent resources. So, that, that's something that is, um, I've heard some companies say that they get developers on their first day actually contributing code to the mainline application because the containers make it so easy to set up their development environment. No sure. more installing SQL Server and you know, backing up files and restoring backups and doing everything else. You just pull down the containers and go. Sure. Well, and that's, that's again, uh, you're, you're kind of uh, giving one of the advantages uh, or talking about one of those advantages with, with containers where I can sort of codify the, my, my, my teams, my, my environment, my company's best practices in a set of images or you know, kind of one master image, and then you can build on top of that kind of uh, uh, or, uh, incrementally over time. And as you say, you can, you can hand that to somebody who isn't familiar with all of your details, but they can get up and running really quickly. Again, whether may, maybe it's even just on their laptop. Well, let's uh, show how easy it is to get up and running with containers with Visual Studio because the tooling for .NET Core completely supports containers out of the box. I'm creating a new ASP.NET Core web application. I'm going to call it on .NET Core. And we'll click OK, and this will spin up. But what's great is when it asks me for my template, I have this option to enable Docker support. So I'm just going to click that. We'll do uh, Linux as the OS. Even though I'm running on a Windows machine, the power of containers lets me run Linux instances. .NET Core, that's uh, right. bread and butter. So I'll click OK. And what this is going to do is it's not just going to create a project for me. It's going to create something called a Docker Compose file and a Docker file. 
The Docker file is really just a set of instructions that tells it how to build the container. And what's great about this is normally people have to hand roll these, these Docker files. Right. This comes out of the box when we create the new project. That's that checkbox. That yeah, check. it's, yeah, it's automatically doing that. Now, Docker Compose describes how multiple containers can work together. So we're not assuming that we just have a web app. We might have a web app, a web API app. And we can have multiple containers working together, and this sort of sets the foundation. Essentially, for how doing we can that. package them, how they communicate, and, and how we can deploy them as a contiguous unit. Right. So, if you see the project that I've pulled up now, my option to debug actually points to Docker. I'm going to run that, and what's happening, and this is pretty cool actually, is that it's building a special image that has all the debug information on that image. And so, it allows me to debug from within Visual Studio. It's actually running inside a Docker container, and I'm going to drop to a command line just to show something. And you don't have to go to the command line with Visual Studio. It's fully integrated. But if we run this command docker ps, that's going to list Docker processes that are running. And you can see we've got our on net core dev up and running, and that's what we would actually debug inside of. And just to be clear, you're running this on your laptop right now. I mean, we're not even talking about the cloud. We're not talking about Azure at this point. Right. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And it's going to be a, a very consistent experience. Uh, it's created an image in the background for me automatically. And this is local with Docker host on my machine. So I just get this from just F5, just like I normally would inside of Visual Studio. I've enabled Docker support, and I can, I can live my, my happy .NET life in Visual Studio, F5, and debug, set breakpoints, the whole thing. I, just, I have that similar experience. Um, that's, that's what you're describing, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. So you have that full experience, and what's great is you can share that, that image so that uh, other developers on the team can debug through that same image as well. Yeah. But at some point in time, you're going to want to push this out, right, to the cloud or sure. to the web. So there's a, a couple concepts, and then I'm going to show the integration here. The first is that you have a concept of a repository for images. And in traditional DevOps, we would take source control and we would check source control into a system. And then as we had builds for staging and QA and everything else, we'd pull down an image of the source and build that. Sure. That can have side effects. You might have a different build environment. So in the Docker world, we build an image, and then we consistently move that image through environments. But we need some place to store it, and that's a repository, right? So that image is essentially that recipe or that template that, that, that uh, explains how to spin up a set of services and, and code that's, that's actually going to implement our application. Yeah. Right, yeah. exactly, and it's contained within that. So there's really two steps to deploying this Docker image. We have to get into a repository, and Azure provides something called Azure Container Repository. And what's great about this is it provides a private repo and there's different service levels. You can have it scaled across regions, so there's redundancy, there's sure. performance, but it allows you to have a secured repository for your company's assets that isn't out in the public. And then this works great with other Azure services, such as the one I'm going to show you, which is App Service for Container. And this web app for Container will actually point to the repo, pull that image out, and spin up everything I need to have a, a public-facing web app. And I'm going to, it sounds like a lot of steps, but if you look at this from the application, if we right click publish, this is, this is going to open a dialog that gives us the opportunity to do Microsoft Azure App Service or App Service on Linux. So we'll choose App Service on Linux, and we'll go ahead and click publish because we've got a Linux target. Now, this is going to ask me for an application name, and this just needs to be unique across Azure. That's what's going to build the UR. URL out of, so we'll just call it on net core. It's going to ask me for a resource group, and this is going to be a, a set of related assets. Kind of in a logical, Azure. logical container in Azure. For right, resources. exactly. Right. So we can spin that up, spin it down. It's going to ask me for an app service plan. This is going to describe the size of the host that I want. It's all my options for scaling up and scaling out. Sure. And then it's going to ask me for the container registry, which I've created this on net CR. By pointing to this registry, this process will automatically build a container, push it into the registry, and then set up a web app that knows how to pull images from that registry. So I'm going to click Create and let it start spinning it up. And I, I always like to explain this process from Visual Studio because there's actually multiple steps when you publish for the first time. The first thing it does is it creates a, a template of assets in Azure that it has to create. 
So it's basically creating the service plan, it's creating the application target, sure. and it's setting up something that's ready to host the application. Then it will build and deploy. Once you do that the first time, of course, any subsequent step is just going to push into that. Yeah, real quick cycle. Same. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So the interesting thing about this, a couple of things. So the, you mentioned Azure Container Registry. Those of you who might be familiar with, uh, more f uh, familiar with containers and, and Docker kind of outside of uh, kind of the Azure ecosystem, you'll be familiar with something called Docker Hub. And Container Registry is, you know, serves the same purpose as Docker Hub, for example. Right. Yeah, and it, it's actually compatible with the same protocol that right. Docker Hub uses. So right. you could just set the credentials and, and do that. And I wanted to point out as we're, we're building here, you can see there's multiple steps. It's like 11 to 17. It's actually creating different layers, and that's what we talked about, how the, the images can have layers and you can build Absolutely. on top of them. Right. So we can take a core, a .NET core image. We can take an ASP.NET core image, and then we just layer on top of that what's unique about our application. Right. So it's built that image, it's published that image, and what we can do now is watch it as it uploads it to the container registry. So it's basically pushing that into that private repo so that the web app can pull it sure. to run our application. See, what's amazing about this, it, it, honestly, is the fact that, again, you know, I'm in Visual Studio, or you're in Visual Studio, and you're just using kind of the standard right right click publish behavior and all the magic that needs to happen for this particular scenario, this you know container specific scenario, it's all the same kind of muscle memory essentially. So uh, from, a, from a .NET Visual Studio developer, uh, that, that's pretty much the ideal experience, right? It, it is, and, and it's funny because one of my associates has a, a saying, friends don't let friends right click publish, right? So, <laughs> and, and it's really to draw our focus on DevOps, but sure. this will actually set up an initial environment and then we can completely set up a DevOps pipeline because what's interesting about the web app for containers is it watches that container in the registry. Sure. And if that version changes, it knows to automatically pull that new image and restart the, the web app. Yeah, I mean, I mean every, everything you're doing here uh, certainly integrates very nicely with things like Visual Studio Team Services and like, like you say, setting up a full CI, CD, DevOps pipeline, uh, you know, works very well with all these tools. So, you know, yeah, right-click publisher isn't necessarily what you want to do uh, kind of a, on a macro level, but it's very easy and very uh, simple to get started. So, like you said, that day, that day one experience, I just want to just want to get something running and see how it works, uh, and then I'll set up my, my DevOps pipeline later. Uh, it's you, you have that experience here, so that's great. Yeah, and let's actually, I think I jumped the gun. I'm running my local host. Let's go into our link here. So we've got the convenient link and there we're running it from a web app service for containers. Well, you verified in, you verified that does in fact still work on your <laughs> machine. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So so now we're in the cloud. We've done that easily and uh, one thing's annoying me here is this copyright 2017. So let's um, make a slight change for that. See if we can find out where it is in our pages and show the update process. Let me, so I'm assuming that's going to be in sort of the external layout. And we'll scroll down. So this is sort of the outer template for my website. And I'm just going to change this from 2017 to 2018. And then I'm going to go through the same step, right click publish, only this time it'll know that it's already created the web app for containers. So all it's going to do is build a new container and push that out. So I think I just need to hit a publish button here. All right, so now it's taking that change. It's building it, but what is really neat about containers having layers as well is when we're deploying new changes, we don't have to deploy all of the layers. Well, they can the detect delta. exactly yeah. which ones change. So we should see that in a second when it actually pushes up to the container registry. So we'll let it spin up. It's doing some restore. So this is basically the build phases in the containers. And there we go. So it says publish succeeded. And I've still got my spinner going here. I can use my uh, clockwise mouse movement, <laughs> right, to speed things <laughs> up. And then layer already exists, so it only had to push there that go, lightweight yeah. top layer. There it is. Yeah. And it's out there. And then it takes a period of time to recycle and spin up, so I may have to refresh a, a couple times. But once that container restarts, we'll see the new 2018 there in there. It it's, it's refreshed. And the great thing about this, too, is because we're behind a web app service, we can have zero downtime, sure. right? It basically waited till that 
new image spun up and then it swapped it out and you didn't see any under construction or sure. waiting for the new deployment. Right. Yeah, it's web apps at the end of the day. So if you're familiar with, with Azure web apps, then you have all the same goodness there, even though we're using containers. Right. And that's uh, auto scale and a lot of other great features. So hopefully at the end of the day, what the user is going to bring from this is that .NET Core is uh, especially suited for containerization and Visual Studio has all the built-in assets to work with Azure to provide a, a hosting platform, a DevOps platform, and really seamless delivery of .NET Core applications into the cloud through containers. Absolutely. Couldn't say it better myself. Yeah. So thanks for coming out. Appreciate thanks, you coming on the show. This thanks for having me, Jeremy. On .NET, and we've been talking ASP.NET Core and containers. Cheers.